Hello everyone. Um, just waiting for a few spotters to say everything is okay. Uh, where are they? One second. I really have some intro music music coming up or something. Um, but we can't do that just yet. Maybe it can be a New Year's project. All right, anyway, let's, I'm going to keep mumbling away otherwise. So, welcome to Civic Arm TV. This is episode 21. Um, and uh, today we're going to be going through tokens um, and introductions to tokens. They're, they're banded about quite a lot, but not, not everyone knows straight away what they actually are and what you can use them for. Um, some of the extensions out there. Uh, that extend tokens and give you give you more uh, to use and then we're going to try a bit of building our own now with most of these superhero on TVs uh, we try to run them in a way where they're not rehearsed and they're not pre-engineered and they're trying to give you what well, we're trying to go through the same um, potential process that you would do as a user or as a consultant who's not used to um, using superhero so um, personally I don't do much development these days, so uh, I'm probably in the same boat as most of you guys out there listening to this, where you're um, not not necessarily getting your hands dirty with code, and you want to do more configuration and know the art of the possible, so to speak. So um, let's have a look. Let me just get my screen up. All right, so uh, let's flip that to Chrome. So what have we got? So looking at the, uh, I don't know how many times I said so there, but looking at the uh, Civic Arm book um, on tokens. Uh, sorry, one second. Where are these people? Getting lots of random phone calls today. All right, so looking at the Civic Arm book, uh, there's a section about tokens and malmerge. So tokens are effectively, well, let's read what they say. You can use your data in CVCRM data database to set up mail merge doc communication for both emails and printed materials. Uh, they should say SMS as well and um, workflow messages. There's a few missing out there. Um, Mail merging functionality relies on tokens that represent fields in your database. Blimey, it's quite this is worded quite technically, isn't it? For example, using the postal greeting token to include a customized greeting for each recipient in your PDF list. Most contact fields, including custom fields you've created, are available as mail merge tokens. So let me try and do a bit of Google Translate on that. So tokens are effectively mail merge fields. So they will be replaced with data from your database. So if I put in the first name token for into a template, um, then when I produce that template for a person, when I produce the output for that person, I will get a uh, their first name into it. Um, sorry, my phone's ringing again. I don't know who all these people are that are trying to call me, but they picked the wrong time. So uh, yeah, so when I produce it, uh, when I take that template and merge it for a contact, it's a bit like Word, if you're used to using Word mail merges or any other kind of word processor mail merges, uh, what you would normally do is take a document and then you would merge it into a CSV and out will pop a document per line in your CSV. Um, and the document would have each um, each of the data sets in there it would be used. So each row would be used uh, per document, if you like. So CV is the same, right? So I'm going to have a document and I'm saying, right now I want to send this to all my contacts. And what CV does is for each contact, it will produce a unique version of that output. So uh, what in the, in the kind of uh, modern way of uh, describing that is called personalization so they're not getting a a letter that says dear sir or madam they're getting a dear john or dear parvis in my sense uh, my not my sense but in my case um, um or dear joe or whatever whatever your name is you're kind of getting a personalized 
correspondence and that's quite important i mean i'm not going to go into why and why you should do this but i'm not in this session not unless somebody really wants it um but uh, it's it's important especially when you're asking or there's a call to action um that initial um that initial the first thing they read if that's per personalized then you're getting you, you're kind of um talking to that person directly so you're going to get a much better response a much higher hit rate than if you just said dear sir or madam um that person probably will have uh, disconnected from reading the rest of that or, or they'll feel like this is generic right and it's not it's a marketing email or it's a bit of spam or whatever so there are some real big pluses as to why you should do this uh, and it's standard practice it's not um it's not something unique to civi or mind-blowingly you uh, you know revolutionary it's pretty standard practice so the document makes a bit of a hash of explain that in my view uh, it could be a lot easier so let's let's go in and try it right so i've got my cvcrm set up the wordpress one that i used last week i think um so it's got a few things in there uh, that have already installed so we've got some extra summary fields uh and um something else uh summary fields and joinery is more summary fields so we've got some extra fields in there uh what i have got let's have a look in terms of contacts and like i say i have not rehearsed this at all so i'm just cross-checking what i've got in my database so i've got 201 contacts great so let's have a look at the message templates and see what i've got in here uh, communications message templates so uh so we've got a few newsletters and so i'm going to let's just create one so i'm going to create a basic uh welcome so i'll call it welcome email and i'm going to say welcome to my to my so that's what's going to come across in a subject and what I want to do is actually use the first the person's first name in that subject line and then I'm going to say uh, Uh, and obviously I can fill that template out with whatever I want and I might say I just wanted to double check you still have right so here I want to put in their address because I want to I want them to um, I want them to uh, da, 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 da. I don't want all the components of the address. I just want the. <sighs> Great. Uh, so I think I thought. I thought it was a token to do this. Shows how long it's been since I've done it. Uh, let's just do street address. So, and then we want and so one thing to bear in mind is what I'm about to do is just copy and paste the tokens so I don't necessarily want to look them up every time. Now there is a token to get an address block. I mean there is a an extension or some way to get an address block. Um, we might have a look at that uh, in a minute. But this is a this is an example of where I'm just going to put in some some fields that are unique to each person and uh, let's do city and we'll do country let's do that all right
All right, so here what I want to do is um, I'm going to put in a checksum token now that I have a form. Um, uh, I'll come, let, let me, yeah, let's come back to this because I don't have a form, so I need to create one. Uh, so I'll just sign off. Uh, and we'll leave everything as default. So this is enabled. I'm leaving everything else as default. So now I've got a welcome email template. Um, now I've, I called it welcome email. It doesn't mean it has to be used as an email. I've just called it that. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and just mail merge a few people. So let, how do we do that? There's a few different ways to do it. I'm just going to do it the simplest way that I can think of, which is not that way because it's only one person. But let's do SM. Let's see what we get back to. Let's do great. Let's try S. How much we get back? Uh, 158. So we've got James Jensen. Jensen, Jensen's, Jensen. Let's try Jensen's, right? So J E. There you go. There's a few, right? So let's take all of these and what have we got here? Ivy Jensen, Kiara, Louis. So we've got a few different names, right? So I'm going to take them all, and I'm going to uh, print merger document. Okay. Uh, use a template. So I'll take my welcome email template and. I'm not going to put it as a campaign at the moment, so I'll just do that. And yeah, PDF is fine. I could do it in Word if I wanted to edit it before I sent it out. I could do that, but I'll just do it as, as PDF. Um, download the document. Great. Uh, so what does that look like now? So no address there. I've got an address there. It's an address there. Uh, I'm getting a few addresses and then a few without, right? Um, Gunter, so they're all different. Rochelle. So you can see there now. I've got I've got a few documents. So ten, ten pages. Um, one document, but ten pages. So one per person. But the token isn't particularly great. Um, I probably want to edit my template to have the person's name in it as well. So I put it in the subject line, assuming I was going to use it for email. Uh, so there's a few things I could do to that, but hopefully it's giving you an idea of um, how mail merging and tokens work. So, so the first thing is let's just have a quick look, uh, and like I say, please do bear with me. I've not tried this, so we're we're in this together. So if I can, let's have a look at the extensions, and let's see if I can find something that does address nope uh, nope nothing in there I thought there was but anyway let's uh, let's not worry about that so uh, maybe it's in the main extensions is it no no i don't think it's in the main extensions either so that's that's fine we'll come back to that so uh let's uh what did i do open that document again yeah so this is the document so let's let's say uh, we want to put in we're going to do two things so we want to put in the um, put in the person's name so we'll add the deal line in and then we also want to have a link to a form that they can um, complete right uh, and that form will be unique to their contact record right so uh, so basically we're not forcing logins we don't need to take them down any kind of authentication route um, they will be able to just click that link 
update their details those details will be saved back to super crm and they can carry on with life so uh, where someone's got no address they could complete an address and, and add it in at the same time so uh, let's sort that out so how do we do that so let's have a look at uh, my profile so I don't need anything super complicated here I just need a uh, customer zone screen so profile is in there pretty pretty straightforward so name and address that will do so we, we use this to just say um, to, to let people complete their information right so we want to call this form and we want to uh, we want to pass in the uh, uh, we want to pass in the the person's information right so I've got my form so sorry you can't see this but I've got my form open in an incognito window so I'm just going to grab the URL of it now I'm going to go back to my message template so communications uh, message templates and then I'm going to go into my welcome email and what I want to do here is let's first just put in first we'll just get it to work with the basics so check some so Let's have a look at the help. So, CBCRM checksum profile. So, it's taking me to the same thing, right? So, checksum for standard profile. So, basically, we're on WordPress site, so we want the profile reset. Uh, the GID, which I think we've got, so let's see. Yep, GID is 12, so that's effectively the profile ID. So that's one we're calling, and then we want to pass in, where are we, WordPress? The contact checksum, which is what I've got, but I didn't put an ampersand, so let me just sort that out. So I should have an ampersand here. Doo -doo -doo. I should have an ampersand here, and then. Um, then I want the contact ID. So I can just copy this, right? Again, like I said, I don't have to look up. It's simply a word replacement thing. So Civi just looks for those sh uh, curly chevrons and then looks for the text inside and finds out if it looks like a token. And if it does, it will sort them out. Sorry, just one second. about that this is the door going it's all happening today all right uh so but yeah so Sibby's just going to take those and try to do a word replacement say right okay so curly chevron is the stuff inside those a contact that i can resolve if it is then great if i can't then i'm going to leave it alone now we do sometimes see systems that break because the token itself is broken uh, i.e when it tries to resolve it it can't something goes wrong and then it can break sending of emails or or, or kind of scheduled jobs and background jobs so something to bear in mind so now that should give me a url that um that is unique to that person now obviously i don't want to show the whole thing to them so what i'm going to do is take this and i'm going to turn it into a hyperlink and i'm going to say https because mine's all https and that's my site right Great, so I should get, so I'm, I'm gonna leave this here just, just for testing purposes so I can see that that looks okay and I'm also got that. And I'm also gonna put, um, I'll just put the person's first name in here. Uh, and, and again, just to make my life easy, I'm gonna literally copy it from up there and paste it down there. So I don't have to use the lookup all the time, just a bit to right in there. 
All right, so let's save that. So let's do the same process again. Let's just search, find contacts. So J, I'll just give me anybody with J in it, take all 10. Merge documents. Oh, what did I do? I don't want to merge contacts. So I'm gonna merge, let's click merge documents. And a template welcome email. Great, all right, so I've got those extra bits in there and I've got my link in there. So right now, if I click on that link or try to open it, it's not gonna work. This isn't gonna work either because these haven't been uh, replaced yet with the actual checksums and contact IDs. And the checksum is effectively a unique um, a unique uh, encrypted uh, encryption key. Uh, it's not actually encrypted, but anyway, it's a, it's a an effective uh, token, if you like. Uh, that gives you the uh, gives that person a unique um, string, which is what Civi uses to see that this request came from Civi and it's all legitimate. And the string hasn't expired. They do last for a period of time, so they do have like the setting in your Civi to say how long they should last. But normally it's like seven days, fourteen days. So if that click, if that link hasn't been clicked on in seven days, when they then go and try and click on it it won't recognize them so they'll still be able to fill it in fill in the information um, but it won't necessarily know who it's for so in effect it might be treated as a new submission in which case your deduplication rules will kick in um, so it's just something to bear in mind that you are expecting that to be completed in a period of time otherwise that checksum does become invalid all right cool beans so let's download the documents i'm doing a pdf again just because so, i'm just want to see what what this looks like some of my changes are taking shape so yep dear jed dear what my first name dear billy great dear ivy dear kiara lovely jubbly so if i then let's try and click into this in a new tab uh, Is it name and email address? I thought it was. I thought it was more than that. Let's see, maybe I've got the wrong form. So uh, let's just have a look at the next page. So there, you can see the full URL. My URL, so you can see CSID and blah blah, blah and that should. I might need to go incognito. This email. I think I'm using the wrong field. I thought it was a name and address, but it might be name and email address. So let's just try that again. Let me see. So we've got the profiles. So name and address. It does say name and address. So what is that? one where did I get 12 from if I do is one that's 12 all right I made a mistake there so let's go back into let's go back into my uh, into my message template so communications oh dear my brain is not working today where are we communications there message templates welcome so in my, I didn't want 12, I wanted one. I don't know how I got 12. So let's edit the link here. I want one, all right. Save that. I'm gonna close that document. So let's do the same thing again. I want the mess. Uh, try different names. Maybe you're right. So we've got a couple there. Let's do those. Uh, all right, so let's download those. Open that document. So dear Kiara, da -de -da -de -da. so that's her address. So that's that one. Let's open that one up. All right, cool. So we can see that it's opened up. Now it's probably not gonna work because I'm already logged in. So what I need to do, 
I'm just going to open this up in a uh, incognito window to just see what it does. This demo is not going well at all. All right, so let's have a look at why that is. Got to check the profile. So basically, the profile was not showing me my information or that person's information. It should do. Um, Think of a reason that I sh that wouldn't work. It should work. Okay, well, that's one to investigate offline, I guess. So that I was expecting that clicking this would take me to an editable version of their record. Not I'll say I wasn't. I was expecting that is what's supposed to happen, uh, but. Mine's a demo and it might be there's something going on in here. So I'll take that away and investigate it a bit later. I just want to crack on with the token stuff. So, um, yeah, coming back to topic. So you've got tokens in terms of data and, and showing data. And you've got tokens in terms of actions and calls to action, i.e. I can put in checksums and contact IDs so that when that person call to action when they carry out the call to action that we can pre-populate and pre-fill information in in forms or put welcome text in and things like that or, or personalized or hyper personalized right so that's when you're starting to get into a much higher level of interaction a much more focused and targeted level of interaction with a person when not only are you communicating with them with their information but also when they're then trying to communicate to you i.e. they're filling in their call to act they're, they're carrying out their call to action that you're then also allow you're also making it very very easy and very very personal so it's kind of hyper personalization um so what normally happens next is um you want some more tokens and, and you can't quite get them so or well, they're not there right so let's say i go back to my um let's go back to our message templates and uh, we say here, what I really want to do is I want to put in um, how many how many events this person's been to. So I might say um, Okay, so I might want to do uh, um, uh, date first number in related time related contacts. Oh, there's quite a lot of contribution ones in there. Total contributions fiscal year, total contributions. So that token, um, if, if you've got a default CBCRM and you haven't really installed any extensions, you wouldn't have that token. So it's not named very helpfully right so it's kind of i know what it is from the fact that where i picked it from but it's not named very helpfully um in terms of 
when you're reading this document, uh, you wouldn't necessarily know what that meant or where's that coming from. But um, we know, uh, obviously, we've been working with Sophia a long time that that is that is a custom field. I it's a field that's being calculated by um, an, another extension. So that extension is saying I'm going to take all the contributions that a person has made in the uh, past year and I'm going to populate and fill them into uh, fill them into this custom field. So that makes life a lot easier for you to then um, mail merge because uh, you don't have to work that out, right? So um, that, that extension will just do it for you. So, so let's say I, I do that. Let's save this again. And let's do, I'm going to do an advanced search now because I want somebody who's actually made a contribution from one dollar. So there's only two of us. So let's run it for these. Uh, let's print now is document. Let's keep doing that. So welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So we can see now, dear Rodrigo. Yes, I'm trying to do. Your donations really helped us out this year. Can you check your address? Uh, same for whoever this is. I think it's me. Your donation of hundred dollars really helped out. Can you check your address, right? So, um, so I'm starting to get into more personalization, and, I, and that was using the extension because that token is not there out of the box. So if I just looked at a standard CV, I wouldn't have a donations this year. I wouldn't have that. So the reason I've got that is because I've in my um, sorry. The reason I've got that is because in my uh, extensions I have enabled. Um, the summary fields and summary fields gives me um, a whole bunch of extra fields uh, to use so totals can't probably read this let's make it a bit bigger so this is this is all of the get github page anyways and i think um spectacular that i'm going through but uh these are all the extra tokens that i get um or extra fields right so a token is a field or it's a piece of programming um, from your database so the so you can use tokens a lot you can use a lot of different extensions that, that do this kind of de data denormalization we did we covered this in the reporting last week uh, two weeks ago uh, if an extension is doing a piece of data manipulation for you then in theory you should be able to use that field the output of that field uh, in your document so these this extension does a whole bunch of stuff around um, around that kind of uh, denormalization and any of this stuff I could use it in the appropriate places so if it's an event related email I could use uh, the name of the last event and, and like it was good to see you at da -de -da, and then uh, thanks for uh, uh, for coming along or uh, you know it was good to see you but you haven't been to so I could pick people that um, that have had a percentage of no shows of like more than 10% or something and say but we've noticed that you haven't been able to come recently you've missed X number of um, events uh, could you fill out a brief survey as to why right so uh, I can really get quite powerful with it and the tokenization means that I can make that information very clear in my communications uh, so so it's really powerful right um, often people will ask us the question of should I continue using MailChimp can I use x y and z mailing system or use this that and the other to do to do my mailings instead of civvy's um, bespoke tool uh, not bespoke tool civvy's uh, inbuilt tools or mosaico or any variation of mosaico um, and our you know we're obviously we're happy to use whatever tool you want to use but um, the big disadvantage of doing that is you then start getting into having to synchronize data Whereas if you if you use from Civi, so if I continue to use Mosaico, um, obviously it won't be as powerful as Mailchimp because Mailchimp's had probably hundreds of millions of dollars invested into it. Uh, Mosaico is probably a fraction of that, but you'll get ninety percent, ninety five percent of what you want to do. Um, the stock stock kind of uh, functions, if you like. Um, then the additional 
data access that you get using the inbuilt tools in Civi, you will not get anywhere near that in, in MailChimp because MailChimp is just not aware of the things that are going on. So unless you set up a full two-way synchronization of data, which we all know is not simple anyway, um, then unless you do that, you're not really going to be able to fully use donor journeys and, and targeted uh, correspondence and things like that because MailChimp just doesn't have the information. I keep saying MailChimp, but whatever external system you use just does not have that level of information. So, um, you know, they're tokens really. In a nutshell, they're all pieces of information about that contact that you know or the system knows that it could be used uh, for any kind of interaction. All right, so that's enough um, soapbox stuff. So, that's why I had that token, because I used that extension. There are some other extensions uh, that are tokened. Uh, let's have a look, we'll just do it, save time. Fancy tokens, so let's download that one, because that is a, an old favorite of mine. I used it maybe eight years ago when it first came out. We use it on and off, um, it, but a lot of our customers will download and install whatever they want. So. Um, so this this extension gives me a whole bunch of new tokens. So um, it's giving me tokens for the CVCRM profiles. So um, if it's web forms and it were doing that, I'm not sure if this still will do it correctly for uh, WordPress. But let's see. Uh, all hyperlinks include the checksum. They include all that stuff that I was coding in using the um, uh, using the help. So let's try it out. Let's see if this does do what it says on the tin. Like I say, none of this is rehearsed. So you are, uh, you'll probably experience what I'm going to experience because I have not tried this yet. So uh, let's see, Sarah and Fancy Tokens, can you help me out? First thing is, do you have an address block that I can use? No, which is kind of nuts, really. But there are some new ones. All right, so all email addresses. So contact addressy, uh, name and address. So so my form, the one that I coded in, is there, right? So it's name and address one. So what I'm going to do is change this now. I'm going to edit this link. And I'm going to use the, oh, I should have copied it. So let's get this token. So. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, search for before address. So there's my name and address one. Let's grab that community news standalone profile one. It's a lot easier, isn't it? So that, in theory, that's what I want. I don't know if that's going to double HTTPS me. So let's just do that. Uh, all right, and we can see what it does anyway. And then uh, what other ones do we have? So then I might want to say, uh, if. Why not take a look? Or well, here's some, uh, and I could events in the next three months. Some of our coming events. So what that will do is it will put in the events that are coming up in that into this email. Uh, onto this letter or whatever I produce now this will move so as if I sent it in February it will include events that are coming out from February so this this is dynamic so once I set this up I don't have to touch it in theory um, and that's the difference between me manually doing things um, so for instance if I was to do it in the external mailing system then I would have to constantly keep that up to date or, or keep a way to sync the two systems so my website knows and or set up an RSS feed. I have to do something to to make it do all this. Um, but with these with these kind of tokens and with the others, uh, 
around the forms, etc. I don't need to know about the system and I don't need to keep the two in sync or updated. So I've got the profile one in there now. I've got a new one in there. Let's save that. And let's go back. I'm going to go advanced search again. Uh, contributions. At least one unit of contribution, whatever I've got in there. Oh, print. Right. Um, lock of email. Download. All right. So, so you can see it's cleaned it up, right? So, uh, it's it's gonna. Oh, it's done it. It looks like it's done it right as well. It looks like the URL is correct. Just looking at the bottom. Um, so let's try that out now. And it worked. So obviously my URL and my construction of that URL was wrong. And that's why it wasn't working. So I can have a look at what the difference between that is. So here we've got reset equals one, GID equals one, CS is that, ID is one, four, nine. So what does my one say? Let's go back. I can't actually see it, so I can't see it. It's good. Yeah, it doesn't work. So which ID equals one four nine? Yes equals G I D equals Sorry, this is more for my curiosity than anything else. So let's go back to that one, the working one. Say so go back to that one. Is this one the working one? Ah, so this profile, the correct one says edit, and my one says create. So that explains that error. So I made that because I, when I copied the link, I copied it from the create link, and I should have copied it from the edit link. So that, so there you go. So there's a primary example of why these extensions and the token handlers are really important so the way i was trying to do it is prone to error and that's generally what what happens right someone will make a just takes a one line or one character mistake or a a slight alteration not realizing you know you've hit delete before you've hit send send and you didn't even realize you did it or you've introduced a space in there somewhere you didn't realize you did it and then the email goes out and it's all kind of um not working so so my advice would be to download a couple of those extensions and try it out and and make sure that's all working um i know we said we were gonna try out token generation but i don't think we've got the time really it's 45 minutes and i don't really want to spend another half an hour doing that so maybe we'll split into another session and we will do creating your own tokens in the next one so for that i'm going to use um, the Civi Co-op and Yaps uh, data processor extension. So uh, if you wanted to try it out yourself, so feel free to give it a go before we get onto it. And um, which one is it? Where has it gone? Uh, so let's close that. I don't need that anymore. So this, this is an extension called data processor, um, which uh, is designed to let you create your own data processing without programming, right? So in theory, I can look for different pieces of information. I can get different pieces of information and I can then um, use those uh, data processes to get uh, to as tokens. So there's two extensions. So there's a data processor extension. Um, let's just go to the, let's just go to the, the so let's go back to data processor, the main, the main readme. So this one is kind of showing you how to, um, how you can do that, how you can create your inputs and your data sources and merge them together, which fields you want and what filters there are. So, so in this way, it's telling me what I'm going to get out and then I can use that out to, um, to display tokens so 
we can show you a bit of that and maybe we can do a bit of programming as well in because uh, we, we i knew we didn't have enough time to do all of that in this one um but yeah so if you want to give that a shot go for it otherwise we'll leave it there for for this week um and just as a reminder if you uh do want to keep informed keep be keeping be kept informed about what the sessions and what we're up to uh please do subscribe um you should see a link somewhere uh, if not just uh, subscribe from the uh, playlist um and you'll get notified of when when the sessions start obviously we're a we're an active consultancy we're not we don't have a marketing or a uh, sales department so this is us actual um actual vader employees delivering staff uh are delivering um client uh functions that are trying to trying to produce these sessions so they don't always uh go exactly on time that we said we're going to do them but if you want to stay informed if you subscribe and uh, then we we can make sure that you know exactly when we're going to do them uh, and hopefully in the new year we can start having the interaction and uh, the chats running as well. Uh, if there's any particular areas you want covered, please do go to um and vote or create, and then we can uh, we can make sure we're we're doing things that the community is interested in. Um, and I think that is it for now. Um, please do have a good Christmas if you celebrate. If not, um, enjoy your time off and stay safe. Uh, and we'll. We see you again in a couple of weeks' time. Thanks a lot.